let me start by asking what attracted you to bring Black Adam to the big screen? As a kind of a comic book nerd growing up and just a fan of movies, um, you dream of the opportunity to tell a superhero story, right? Or an anti-hero story in our case. And as a kid growing up, I always loved those movies, whether it was, you know, Dick Donner's Superman when I was a child, which blew my mind. And I was always a huge Superman fan, you know, to Tim Burton and Michael Keaton and so on. Um, you know, you dream of it. And once we got into the film business and working with Dwayne, who's, you know, a brother to me and obviously with Danny, but we always knew that Dwayne is a walking superhero. I mean, you look at the guy he's made to be a comic book character. So when we started to feel the traction of what was happening in the industry and that there was a real opportunity to make these kinds of films, you know, it started just as a whisper. It's like, hey, you know, what would be cool if we brought Black Adam to life, it's like, oh my God, I love Black Adam, love that character. And then it starts as a whisper and then you start to move it a little bit and we try and you know, carve a, a path for ourselves in the industry by earning you know, respect and, and a reputation of being able to tell stories and, and have some success with the fans. Uh, and you continue on and what starts as a whisper becomes a 15 year journey. Um, but to bring uh, ultimately a character and an anti-hero to the big screen that we felt had never been seen before. And we've seen anti-heroes before on screen, but never one at the power scale of Black Adam. And I think a lot of heroes typically usually have very kind of compelling stories that put them in the place they are. But there was something very unique about Black Adam, not only because of his origin, in essence, he was one of the first uh, hero types of his kind, but to be at that power, to be an anti-hero, to have the backstory that he had and a character that's so rooted in family as, as basically the catalyst for what makes him uh, kind of do the things he does is something always very intriguing to me, Danny and DJ, and especially the fact that he's got edge and he looked like DJ. That was another thing we liked. And, and he, we knew that this was, would be a character that if we're lucky to make it, we wanted a character that could be a disruptive force in kind of the, the world of DC. And there's a lot of great powerful heroes out there and who could come in there and be a real problem. And, uh, and we were able to do that with Black Adam. Now you said 15 years, is that how long it took for you since you thought of it, conceptualized it and went after this project? 15 years. And it's like, and when you think about that, you know, I mean, look, you've done great things in your business and you know how hard it is to do stuff. But when you really visualize like for 15 years, always returning to one idea and trying to push it a little bit further and working to make it happen. And what can we do to set ourselves up to win a little bit, uh, you know, a little win a little bit more and really using all the experience experiences we've had from our other projects and kind of using that knowledge and information to apply it towards Black Adam and how can we do it and how can we make a film in a way that hadn't been done before and how can we use technology that hadn't been done before. So yeah, you know, DJ actually pulled up one of the articles that first spoke about him possibly playing Black Adam at the time. And I think that was at the time was maybe a 2007 article. And obviously we had even discussed it before then. So, you know, uh, it's been a very long journey, but everything happens for a reason. And we feel like this was the right time to introduce Black Adam to the world. And what were the biggest challenges in making the film itself? Oh my God, I mean, <laughs> there's so many <laughs> challenges. Uh, it is hard to make a movie. It is very hard to make a movie. Anytime we're fortunate enough to make a movie, we consider ourselves very blessed. But to make a movie at this size with a character that isn't as well known um, and to get the studio behind it in regards to making an anti-hero who uh, takes a lot of lives in the way he dishes out justice, um, you know, it's challenging. And to get the story right, the, the version of the story we wanted to put into it and actually have the ability to put the characters we wanted into it. We really wanted to introduce the JSA in a, in a big way. We wanted to introduce Hawkman and Dr. Fate, Cyclone and Adam Smasher. Um, we wanted to make the world feel bigger by including some cameos from other characters in the DC universe. And obviously we have a very big cameo at the end of the movie, which was always a priority for us. So that was a lot of work and it took a lot of battling and fighting and a force of going forward of saying we weren't going to take no for an answer and we really wanted to bring this this dream come true uh, uh to the big screen and for us it was a family dream you know danny Dwayne, and i always speak about this this is something collectively that is hard for me to even remember a time where we didn't at some point have a conversation about black adam always at some time throughout the process so uh it was a long journey but 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 the entire process was really hard. But like, you know what they say, if it, if it wasn't hard work, sometimes you don't enjoy it as much. So <laughs> we're enjoying it now, but but it, it, it certainly was a challenge. 
What's your reaction to Black Adam topping the box office in its first weekend? Well, that's that's a dream come true. Um, uh, to now be here, like you said, on the other side of 15 years and and to see the audience reception to it, I think, is the most gratifying part of the process. It is to put so much heart and soul into a project and 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 really want to deliver a movie for the fans and to see their reception and to see our audience score and to hear them talking about it. That's that's what you dream of. You know, we want to tell big stories. We want to make people feel better. And when you feel in sync with your audience that you're working so hard for and feeling their joy and enthusiasm for the project you made, it just, it's the best feeling in the world. And it's, it's something that, that we really have been celebrating at seven bucks because it was our main goal was always to take care of the fans. And we felt like we were able to do that. So you mentioned you were a comic book fan. You are yes. a comic book fan. I, Who's your favorite superhero? Well, obviously Black Adam is not my favorite superhero, but before Black Adam, uh, I was hundred percent a Superman fan. Like I was always a Superman fan. And so, you know, as a filmmaker, I actually put a lot of things into this movie that I always dreamed if I was to make a Superman movie, things that I would want to do just in terms of his abilities and powers and strength and so forth. Um, you know, those characteristics of just these, these, these larger than life characters. So I was a Superman fan growing up, but obviously now Black Adam's number one. And then Superman for me has to become number two. <laughs> well, talk about that surprise Superman cameo at the end post credits. What does yeah. this mean? Well, it means that uh, first off that, you know, the Henry Cavill Superman storyline is being continued now in the DCEU. And that's very important to us. We wanted to, you know, um, in establishing Black Adam that we always viewed as we were going to introduce the most powerful force on the planet. We feel like you can't properly set that up without making sure that the most powerful force in the universe in Superman is present. Um, and the fun thing about it is Black Adam has so many ties to so many characters. And obviously, you know, he originated as a villain to Shazam and, and we have great ambitions for how we plan for those guys to eventually cross paths. But, you know, Henry as Superman is the Superman of our generation and is kind of like, you know, the, the godfather of the DCEU. And it just feels like when you introduce a character like Black Adam and you really want to establish him in the world, uh, it feels like uh, the acknowledgement by the most powerful force in the universe and Superman um, feels like the kind of, of, of moment that helps really establish Black Adam in the world. And you feel like in our hopes, uh, we're able to show that these two characters now exist in the same world. Um, it's not about creating a movie where they're just fighting that's low hanging fruit. I think these where what we would love to do is hopefully you know, be able to tell a long story where these guys exist in the same universe. They're probably gonna see eye to eye sometimes, but probably not. Um, they might clash, they might work together, who knows, but we want to establish them in the same world and then see where we can go as we tell some great stories within the universe. You sound really excited about this whole superhero universe. Uh, is this something that you really want to continue to foster? I mean, you have also produced Shazam. Um, and so now you have Black Adam, you're talking Superman, uh, is uh, Seven Bucks Productions going to expand its superhero universe? That's our hope. You know, the, the what, what happened with the great reception we got from Black Adam was one step closer to us being able to um, start to uh, unfold the, the big ambitions we have for the DC universe. But, you know, Danny Dwayne and I are huge comic book fans and we just love doing what we do and being able to tell these big stories and to be able to start to establish a space within the DC universe and start to roll out some storylines is, is really what we're excited about. You know, we want to be able to tell a lot of stories in this space. There's a ton of amazing characters we want to be able to get into. Obviously in Black Adam, we've introduced several new heroes, um, but just the introduction of the JSA alone is in, in, in essence a doorway to so many other characters that have been a part of the JSA. So we love long form storytelling. Uh, we wanna be able to really take our time and start to establish a lot of characters that fans can fall in love with and really build equity with so that we can start to do some really exciting storylines that, that merge all these worlds together. Um, but again, it's always dictated by the fans. The fans have been uh, unbelievably supportive and, and the response has been great. And, and our hope is, is that as we continue to grow, you're gonna start to hear um, some more announcements coming from our side about uh, what else we wanna be able to do in this world. Any plans yet on a Black Adam sequel? 
Uh, well, look, as good producers, we always have storylines ready to go, and there are lots of conversations happening. Um, uh, you know, uh, I do think that you'll start to hear some stuff about it, but but it's all in the works. We really like to make sure we want to settle in, make sure the fans are happy, things are receive, being received the way we want them to, and, and in that you'll start to hear some noise coming from our camp. So you've produced many hit action films with Dwayne Johnson, who's also your former brother-in-law and business partner yeah. uh, in his own production company, Seven Bucks Productions. Describe your personal and professional relationship with Dwayne and how do you determine what projects you both want to work on? Yeah, you know, look, I've I've had the privilege of making a lot of movies with Dwayne and Danny. You know, uh, I've always viewed um uh, the success of Seven Bucks really, you know, it takes a village and, and you know, and, and fortunate to be at the core of it with Danny and Dwayne. And, you know, I met DJ when I was probably 14, 15. And, you know, him, myself and Danny always have just had a great relationship. And we always had a real synergy between the three of us. We always had similar work ethics, um, similar ambitions. We always wanted to do really big things and we loved telling stories. So, um, Look, when you get to work with people like Danny and DJ, especially, right, like not only did they have unbelievable work ethics, they're so successful, but they wake up every day with an energy as if they're going to be homeless the next day. And that is really inspiring. Like you never feel them take the foot off the pedal and you never feel them um, uh, kind of step back from an ultimate goal and focus of always wanting to make sure that they're listening to the audiences and that they're taking care of the fans. And all of our filmmaking and our storytelling is always fan first. Uh, you know, we love to make projects that ultimately make people feel better. Um, you know, we know that it's, uh, it's it's a great honor to get people to come to the theaters to see what you make. And there's a lot of stuff going on in people's lives. So if you can get them to come to your movie and, you know, what we want to do is be able to give, you know, whether it's an hour and a half, two hours of escapism, which whatever stresses are going on in your life, you can leave them at the door, come have fun, get some escapisms, get some wish fulfillment and leave feeling a bit better than you did going in. That's always our goal. And that's one of the main things we look for when we're looking for projects. We always like to look for stuff that's high concept, um, things that, you know, uh, feel like they'll cut through the noise. There's so many great things made out there. There's tons of great content. And like, what can we do that kind of helps cut through it and, and stand out a bit, but also telling stories that um, are global and that cross all boundaries and cross, you know, all divides that, that are universal stories that people can really embrace and that also represent the world, the way the world we see it. You know, I think when you look at Black Adam, you look at the JSA, it's an awesome cast. It's a very diverse cast. It, I think it's representative of the world we live in. It's a world as, uh, you know, the way we see it, obviously Dwayne is, is you know, half Samoan, and half African-American. Me and Danny are, are you know, uh, the children of Cuban immigrants. So we love representing um, the world in our characters in a really fun way and being able to tell those stories. So those are the things we look for. Uh, but the key is just making sure that we're telling stories that are going to make people feel better. You're never going to really see a seven bucks film that ends on a downer. Those films are great. And, you know, we appreciate a tearjerker. But if you come to a seven bucks film, we want you to feel good and, and we want you to feel happy at the end of it. Otherwise, if you aren't, we, we aren't doing our job. So you work in film and TV in a wide range of genres. Which one do you like best? Look, I love them all. I love being able to tell stories uh, in every way. We love what we've been able to do in TV, love our young rock series. But, um, you know, for me, I've, I, I, I came up just with a lover of film. So film will always be my first passion. And I really try and take a lot of the elements that I utilize in film and, and make sure we're placing it into our storytelling on TV. There's just something about the cinematic experience. And, and I love ultimately creating content that leans into the communal experience of going to a movie. You know, like when we made Black Adam, we wanted to make a movie that was meant to be seen on a giant screen and with great sound and with an audience so that you could cheer and have fun and laugh. I think that's the ultimate version of storytelling when you're able to share it with other people. Um, so film is definitely my favorite, but film and TV are both are, are wonderful mediums. And, and the more we get to tell stories in both of them, the more privileged we feel. What's next on your slate? So right now, uh, the next thing on our slate is, you know, we have another season of Young Rock. Uh, season three is coming out in November, which we're really excited about. We're able to now continue that story with, you know, NBC and, and, and our great showrunners, Nanachka Khan and Jeff Chang. Um, and then we just started filming our big holiday movie for Amazon. We have a really big Christmas movie that features Dwayne Johnson and Chris Evans. Uh, we have a great cast. We've always wanted to make a big Christmas movie. And this is the one. This is a, like really fun um, tons of love, tons of emotion, 
but also just big fantasy adventure. And, and it, it fits right in the tone we wanted to do. You know, we love pouring some goodness back into the world, but we love pouring it when it has a bit of aggression to it. So, you know, a lot of people are going to get punched in the face. There's going to be some explosions, but you're also going to have some good laughs and, uh, and want to hug someone at the end of it. So we're really excited about that. What's the name of it so we can tune in? So, uh, you know, it's currently called Red One. We're, 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 the, the, the title is growing, but it's, it's a project known as Red One at Amazon. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being so generous with your time and sharing a little bit about this movie and upcoming projects. Really appreciate taking the time. Thanks so much, Veronica. Great talking to you, and I hope we get to talk again soon.